Well, do you think this is the winning draft for for Nemiga? Because I can't help but repeat myself. They are sitting in second last place. Technically last place. They never gonna not do that noise in the uh, player I intro. Think... I, I'm scared because the last time I saw Namiga play Ursa, he pretty poor start, but then his itemization just won them the game. Question is, does he have the time present in this game to get to that point where he has three, four items to win a game of Dota? Like, is the map going to be big enough? And when you look at Gambit, they're going to have this like fucking being super aggressive. Is Ember mm. poking and prodding, being super annoying as before. They jog like super farm. Like sure, technically Gambit's lineup is also very greedy. They also don't have stuns, right? They have a cookie, a root, and an RP. Like that's all they have. Yep. Namiga also are gonna be very confident in these early fights. And I think if Namiga can start the ball rolling, look for the fights first and don't react to Lycan ult and force Lycan ult to be like a defensive tool, then sure, I think Namiga can start owning the game, but they are gonna eventually run into the issue of how do we end the game? How do we go higher ground? How, How do, do we, we go high ground? Like, <laughs> so, they can fight beautifully, right? They have a yeah. beautiful fighting lineup, but they're just, both lineups have their, their issues. But I, I feel ease of execution ju just goes to Gambit because like, and if he's proactive again, it's so hard to react to, to like him. Yeah, I like the ease of execution that you just said. And then we add the Exus Vampire Ember Spirit into the into the mix. Oh, I guess they now have a vessel buyer. Such a great thing, though. Is it, Panda? Is it? Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Pause 4 Ember. That's, like, probably one of my favorites uh, that have been introduced during this year. Might have been played last year already, I guess. Six months but... of the same patch. I've come to love the, uh, the new. <laughs> 30 seconds to battle. Oh, something. Yeah, true. It is. Can't knock him for trying. And then Vampire automatically yeah, I mean, dewards yeah. the ward. Oh, because he realized they revealed it with the right click. Yeah, but inch. Nope, no sentry. So uh doesn't even actually get to place the sentry down. Oh, Lauren S pinging him as well. Like, Vampire, why'd you not just place the ward on the high ground, man? Why'd you not place it <laughs> here? Why didn't you do that? Why are you yeah. placing it there? <laughs> why'd you do that? <laughs> However, they are going to have to give these bounties away at least. It will be a basic two for two as we get our game number two of this uh, first best of three series of the day of the morning. Wherever you are right now, it's morning here. It might be evening there. Hello to you as well. Get to enjoy some uh, quality Dota before our Division 1 kicks off after this. I think it's still about three, four hours away from now, so you have plenty of time to prepare for uh, this evening's action in the main division. However, Div 2 has some promising teams. Very good looking teams yeah. as well. But uh, yeah, the important thing as well, like this whole mm. division system that we have both in the Mega League and now Epic League, it's this is kind of what's going to yeah. happen in the new year, right? The, I think the key difference is with separating EU and CIS and putting it into two differently. But yeah, yeah we're not going to see these teams battle it out and finally get the funding that they need to try and support, especially for other regions as well. So exciting yeah. times in the new year. Exciting times indeed. I'm in, uh, looking for the skewer, misses it. A 20 second cooldown right there. Oh, my. I think with Magnus, However, like, level one is his big power spike. Like, when it gets to level two, level three, that's his issue because obviously Lena, Tuss, they have spells. But level one, if he connects on that skewer, that disconnect, that Blade Fury on the jug, suddenly you're not able to win your lane. And it is really trying to pressure as much yeah. as it can. But it soon will come to a point where he is just a, an empowered bot. This vampire keeping an eye open here on Satake, but will uh, instantly just grab the rest of the wave while Lodin is trying to connect. Uh... However, he gets stunned up though, I looking for a kill know. and melee. First, first blood. And whose salve was that? Whose salve broke? Somebody used a salve in the midst of that fight. That was either the Ench, who already has one extra. Either way, the more important thing there is Lodin as an enchantress was just dying there. <sighs> You just can't have these type of deaths when you're against a snap ember. There's not really that much pressure. You got a little bit of poke and prod, but realistically... Oh, skewer and top snowball. Good reaction nice snowball there. Out, yeah. 
worrying start from, uh, especially from Lou. He also doesn't yeah, have Lodin, that always camp. Lodin's well. been a bit of, uh, yeah, he's been on his edge uh, since the start of this series. Not the, not the greatest start of the day for him. Fortunate stuff, but now, here we go. He's got a creep. He's ready to play Dota. But, uh, Taka Taka is, is getting bullied, everything. meanwhile. Body blocks on the Ursa, 90 dead. HP, and he's dead. The That's moment the Ench isn't there, right. Gambit just instantly jumped the carry, get the kill on the Ursa. All I can say is well played by Gambit, realizing their strengths. That's exactly what they're supposed to do. Xani also forced away in top lane, 200 HP, does have the healing work to keep him alive. Now they're going on to uh, Lodin. Lodin's courier is dead. This vampire taking a beating here, but Lodin very low again. An excess vampire. Those burning hooks right onto Bambi's feet, and that that is a dead deer. This is an absolute disaster in the bot lane. Lodin dying to first blood, then the Earths are dying. Lodin then TP's back and dies again. Like this is a lane that it shouldn't be this hard, but. Of these early deaths we are seeing the value of uh, just the damage that Snapfire has and to some degree you can give praise towards Ember with that kind of non-stop poke with the slight and then the connection of the uh, chain sorry but it just shouldn't be happening the Migo are going to be themselves when they watch back this replay for this bot lane Scare though onto mid on Viper. Saying it though, it is a Viper. Yep. Ina's <laughs> courier does go down. Decent damage on Magnus. Einkrat finds one TP away. All the way back, uh, back to the tower. Lorena pops his salve, gets his HP back. Einkrat did use a lot of resources for this. It's a kill and almost another one, but Lycan's back to full HP. He's got no mana on this Viper. Is there any region coming in? Two clarities, all right. Don't be mad. Will a clarity cut it? If he just sends the wolf to cancel that, Ooh, that could be... Magnus, smoke. Magnus looking for another play. Oh, hey, smoked up here we go. with the TP. Going for Einkrad. The long route behind. Looking for the skewer play. And there's the reveal. And it's like, I want to break your clarity. I will break it. And the skewer nicely played there with a the shockwave skewer TP. Not going to be enough for Einkrad. That's a death. Oh, oh, no. That is beautiful from Aina. Absolutely beautiful there. Because that shockwave into skewer... He shocked wave behind the Viper, and the Skewer was able to pick him in front, so he could connect both abilities without using any extra microseconds of waiting to see where is he positioned. He knew exactly where that Viper was going to land. The important thing there, though, is Aina had, once again, two games in a row, he left his carry alone, and Kasani is having a, a, a terrible time, so he's really struggling. So Magnus, he had to connect on that mid play. If he failed that rotation, not only would he... He had wasted his time mid. Kasani's not having a game top, so it's it's good for Gambit that they were able to connect oh, on that Viper kill. Yeah. Because look at this level three juggernaut just getting absolutely hammered by this. Harass. There's the the spin will be forced out, but the right click's coming out. The stun on Magnus. Right click's gonna be enough for the jug kill. Excess vampire also killed by Tatake. And here comes the shapeshift Lorenov with the TP rotation. Will get the Lena kill. Tusk will get out. Eventually. There you go. Eventually, yeah, finally. <laughs> Wants to secure the last hit so that the creeps don't ex accidentally get the kill. But a response kill happening in bottom for Tatake. Does take a bit of a bullying here. Cookie. Uh, okay, Cookie connects on the Centaur. Centaur stunning the Snapfire. It's just vampire. Ooh, Tatake is going to get another one. But he's also dead. There's nothing more satisfying than the shotgun point blank to the face of a carry trying to kill you. It's like, nope. Not today. Generation. Yeah. Ursa gets the kill first, but dies right after. Is that worth? No. I don't think it's, I don't think it's ever worth if your carry fear. dies. That was a very commitment mode the attempt there. Their In terms of CS, though, it is going all in Amiga's favor. They got the DLC the now getting the kills. In bot lane, we got this Dino C crushing top, other than the, the, the Lycan rotation. And then Viper naturally just farms up, so it is a much better start for Amiga. And this is kind of what they need. They need to be able to hold down the top three spots on the net worth on their cores. And then find the key rotations. Allow the Ench and the Tusk to enter a lane, provide that kill. Because independently, these cores aren't that great at killing, right? They're they're annoying, but they're not scary. With Tusk or with Ench, suddenly their the game just elevated. And that's what I want to see from Amiga. That constant pressure from both Lodin and from Petri. 
Tuck and Lodin getting to push the wave under the tower. We've got some dark trolls uh, for the Ember Spirit. Webs available, but we're still hiding in the trees. The snapfire chains connecting on a melee creep. Catch the Ursa. Ursa does get his ulti off in time. That's gonna soak up the duration of this uh, the cooking stun. Melee is dropped to half HP. Mortimer's kiss is available. I guess what they're looking for here is. Okay, shapeshift coming in. Low Dean, you're in trouble. Big bad wolf on its way. Mortimer's kisses. Looking for the Ursa. Not connecting. One. Only one connection on the Mortimer's kisses. Lorainoff should be able to get this in the end. Earth shock to safety. Low Dean is dead. Ursa. One right click. There we go. Two kills for Gambit. Snapfire gets to live. Dire structures are fortified. Straight onto the tower. I like this rotation. So they're trading bot tower, attack. but look at the pressure from the Mega. We saw in that game one as well. Is that when they're under pressure in one lane, they are in instantly capitalizing on the openness of the map. They have mid tower gone, and Lena Dyer's just you know chunking away top. Attack. It fights for its life. The chosen one, he is the one right now that I'm looking out for. He needs to have a, a, an absolute outstanding game. He can really dismantle the pressure from the like the Yules. Has to. The LSA, Gambit, great stuff. trying to play defensive on their their own side of the jungle. Dyer's They're going straight for the Viper. Cookie, skewer to the cliff maybe. Aina, it's just slowly Dyer's dying to the ticks from this Viper. Dead. Viper's dead, but My Aina, well, he will dead. live because he uh, gets the help of his teammates connecting the stuns, keeping the Viper from hitting advantage. Lycan, Wait, dying in lane. What the heck? Ah, the, the old Tusk rotated in. Good old Tusk. Good old Tusk. Well, it's an important one. No shapeshift Lycan goes out and a pick off for Ursa. I love how uh, artistic Lauren F is as a player. Like when his ward got dewarded at the start, he was like pinging here. And then he's now drawing himself the line here, which is like, why am I here? <laughs> he really artistic likes to... indeed. Yeah. Meanwhile, the chosen one, there's an Omni oh, slash oh, used by Xani. Shippy yeah. enough. There we go. See what I said about that having that perfect game? Because Xani just laps up. Free <laughs> kill. Yeah, I'm not sure what the Chosen One was thinking about. Level 8 on Lina, decent amount of burst damage. Might be enough to kill the Jug, but Jug's still got an Omni Slash, so uh, not the easiest. Lodin to Takave right here. We have a battle for the Ursa coming this game too, so the Ursa wants to keep up the farm. Now jumping the Earth Shock onto the Snapfire. Here comes under the Shapeshift by Lorena, and wants to get a bit of revenge on Tatake because he killed the Ursa, then the Ursa killed the Lycan in lane, and now the other way around. Earth Shock onto the high ground, but there we have our Lorena coming in as well. So Excess Vampire connects the chains, Ursa, sorry, Lycan picks up the double kill. 5-1-0 on Lycan. It's just so annoying to play against this Lycan because you go for one pick off, you get it, and then you're like, hold on. Wait, what do I hit? Oh, you know? And same with Snapfire. Mm. If you don't get that kill, she just turns around and lobs in the ult. So Gambit have this very no committal damage. Oh, look at this. Yep. What a bait by Aina. Well, he's going to TP away. Not beautiful. Absolutely beautiful there. He cast his skewer, cancelled it because he was suspecting the tusk would instantly snowball and follow up on him to the high ground so he can't escape. So he just, you know, cancelled it. He's got this snowball tusk right next to him. He's like, alright, I don't need to go towards the viper. I'll just wait for the snowball stun and then TP away. Small things, but, you know. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Level, is level 9, man. Level 9. Viper strike. Two components to Ags. Jeez. Juggernaut doesn't lose a single bit of HP with the spin used while the Viper Strike's been used for ulti for pretty much uh, no avail. And look at how the Mega are playing their lineup right now. They're all about these early Wait, cheap fights, right? And that's what they're positioning for. But like, th this game is also the story of the offlane. It's chosen one level 9 Lina, Melee's level 9 offlane. Like, these are having great games, and that's what both teams that need to try and play around. We've seen Gambit already do that to great effect, and now it's the Amiga's time to try and utilize their offense yeah. and get him into the mix. Ooh, wall rush punch. Uh, it's gonna be a miss here. Her jumps away. Aina also skewers back under the tower, forcing Nemega to keep on making these moves without finding any kills. A little pause kicks in too. Reassess their situation momentarily. Tiny bit of maybe. There's been some uh, team speak lag going on. That is get true. those fixed. Those things fixed and uh, get back with the game. Uh, 17 kills though in 12 minutes, but most of them are going for Gambit, even though it's Nemega who are showing the pressure. 
Yeah, so if you think about the net worth right now, it's the exact same story as most Ursa games. This Ursa yeah. is going for the Battle of Fury. So all his net worth right now is being put into him to farm further. He still needs another, you know, let's say 1500 gold to get that Battle of Fury. If you look at the timings of Gambit, the Lycan about to get Necro free, Snapfire two components away from Axe. Juggernaut, he's just farming, right? Like Gambit are going to have a much quicker team timing in which they can utilize their net worth react. into the fight. And this is where maybe Namigo, with their ability to fight, they need to bring all five heroes to offset the fact that their attack. Ursa is just kind of like a farmy boy right now. Yeah. Oh, Vampire. Minecraft. Minecraft reveals the, the Rod of Atos as well, but it connects onto a Snap Illusion. Out of all things, Lodine, the long, long chase. And then we have Tusk throwing in some shards as well, so they will block the escape. Very good damage coming in from Excess Vampire. Kind of be enough for an, uh, any support kills, though. Just tickling, you know? Just drop low. Yeah, Lorenov getting stunned in the camp at the same time, but no aggression from Nemiga. They've already backed away. Now, this is going to be so annoying if you're Namiga because your Viper went for Atos and soon bots. His Ember's going to a vessel soon. Like, every single item that Gambit buys within the next five mm. minutes will instantly translate into fight presence. And Smoke. for Namiga, it's just not really, it's not really the same right now. So Smoke Namiga and like, Shapeshift. They have to look for a fight, if you're Namiga, that is. But. Well, they're going for Ankrat, and at the same time, Elias is going to get jumped up with the smoke coming in from Nemiga. Melis is out. Lorenov still hunting the kill on this Viper. The tower kills the Necro unit. Chosen one gets the Yules. Oh, the stun misses, misses, though. Doesn't get it. And the Laguna Blade just just doesn't get the chance to use it. A TP out. Oh, no. Well, they get the melee's kill at least with the smoke, so still one hero out from Gambit, but that could have been a big Lycan kill. Yeah, and that's what Namiga needed. They need that disconnect when the Lycan runs in deep, they kill the Snapfire straight away. They are ambitiously now going to try to go, go for Roshan, which I think they're going to have to, you know, dip out of. There we go. Gonna have that to wait for a bit, no, they. Also, that was a showing of why Lina is arguably pretty good against Lycan, because if you get that yours onto the Lycan, you get that LSA after, and you layer in with that extra little damage or stun from someone else, you can blow up the Lycan. It's why, for example, Kunk is so good against Lycan. You have the Torrent, yeah. you keep him in place. Exact same thing with Lina. You have the cast range talents, you potentially go for Aether Lens later on, but you have ways to stop his aggression and then stun him. But you do Another need the smoke. fight to be slow for that to work. They are yeah, approaching like with a four hero smoke here towards the Gambit jungle. Excess Vampire is going to be in front. They su should spot him soon. They don't oh, actually see so him. Close. But Meles is also under the edge of their vision. Chosen One gets to push the wave in. And they should get the jump on the Snapfire. But they need to go in quickly. The shards come out. Meles run, gets me a jump. Uh, now those shards are blocking them. The, their own shards are blocking them right now. So Meles gets the chance to escape. Are smoked up right behind. Petru goes for a brilliant play here. He will reveal the smokes. Xani, Omni Slash comes out. Minecraft oh. is out. Lodin is dead too. And that just instantly bites Nemiga. A lot of damage kicking in. And it's going to be Petru down as well. Two heroes already gone. The third one following suit. Gambit, get the jump on Nemiga. Nemiga didn't get the jump on Gambit. Damn, that was so close. Like, if Nemiga just found that Snapfire kill, it would have been a completely different story. But... Men are just dropping back, able to kind of realize that like, my team is smoking, I don't need to be farming. And Shape shift, going for Lina. They're going. LSA stun, tries Don't to get the Magnus kill, go. will get Lina's down as well. Xani almost been taken down by Tatake. Excess Vampire body blocking the Ursa. Ursa turns around, realizing that there's no other way than to just try and fight through this, but it's not going to happen. Rodok Etos onto the Lycan, a bit of damage from the Viper, but it's not going to be quite enough here. Lodin also on the high ground. And, ooh, got to be careful with that Necro unit. Gonna do a lot of damage with that last will doing 800. But with no almost killed the no Mortimer kisses, no Lycanop. This is the Migos' time to really try and fight. Even though they are technically 3v5 running deep into Dyer, they are still really, Magnus really with strong. RP though, going on Lorenoff. Ankrat, a bit of damage, doesn't quite get the, the majority out though. Viper Strike still available. They're gonna back away momentarily. Ellis is pushing in the top wave. I'll take that. Purse is gonna have to respond to that. They do spot Lodin. Excess Vampire finds the edge. Half HP already dealt. Smartly backing away. Excess Vampire knows that he needs to play around his abilities. And he's gonna spot this Roche action. He jumps out before Petru gets the chance to catch him. 
And here comes Lorraine. 50 seconds for uh, Shapeshift to be up. Mortimus Kisses are off cooldown right now. Still, Nemiga, right. they really want this Roche. They do, they do, but look at the minimap. Juggernaut's not even here. Gambit, they can't really contest it. Like you've already mentioned, like Mag has no HP, Lycan has no ult. So this is Gambit just trying to delay as long as possible. Maybe yeah. even going for the snipe. They're trying to go for the snipe play, but Radiant get the kill. The Aegis for Tatake and Nemiga come out on the strong end. Mortimer's Kisses, Lina also dying. Nemiga Lina kill. finally gets taken down by Lorenoff and the summons. Bit of a cookie, but it goes the wrong way. Lodine, Aincrad in mid. Really Nemiga lost two though. heroes. Like, and that Aegis as well is out instantly. The way in which Gambit fought around the push and they had the Jug just like always farming light bottom, light. didn't rejoin really into the very end. But it's the Ember, the Poke, that Moima Kiss sick. and the Lycan committing to the fight, but just with his summons. Throwing in the Necro, but throwing in the walls. They, Namiga, they had nothing to stop it. They just died to all this kind of Radiant zero threat damage from Gambit, where it's like, well, we don't have to put our bodies on the line. We're just throwing in our spells. Oh, gobble up with the axe. Nice. It's gonna catch Petru off guard completely. Snowball, back to safety. There's still that green wave. Petru will live. Gambit still putting up the pressure. Namiga trying to find a response. Petru low on HP. That, that, that's an instant uh, ward, uh, D ward right there. They put the sentry down at the same time as the ops goes down. The saving grace for the Amiga there is they at least got the the, the Roshan last hit. So they got a, a little bit of gold for the for their losses. But Gambit now grouping Radiant's up. They're hitting a big big timing of wait, you can just keep fighting. Radiant we've taken we've our ages fortified. timing. And we are yeah. able to make our own moves. Magnus just Especially about not even having to dagger. fight yeah. Not even having to fight against the Aegis because they popped it in the last fight. Even though they were under man. Dyer's top tower is under and attack. Magnus RP Blink is up. Has grown thick. Amazing from an Amiga. I don't know who played it earlier, but the one top side of the map behind Radiant's the tier two. Like, that will be potentially an absolute fight winner because Gambit like to play on the edge of the fights on the fringe. And if they get the pick off or the jump, then it's a completely different story. They won't be using it right now, though, as they do need to react to bot lane being pushed in. Shapeshift from Lorenov. Lodin's gonna be in the front, looking for Petru. There's the gobble up, doesn't quite connect on anything. Nice shark oh, block, but it's not gonna be enough. Lorenov still finds a way to through. Purge. TP gets cancelled. Snowball will buy a bit of time, but that's gonna be the end of the Tusk. Lorenov finding another 9, 1, and 2 on this Lycan right for that top 2 tier 1 power. 1. And we have a Halberd coming up for the Ursa. Still a bit far uh, far away from it, but that Battle of Fury on the Ursa will definitely help him farm it. It's not a damage item, unfortunately. It's, it's not. It's a survival right. item. Yeah. And that is going to be the Killing thing spree. kicker. Oh, oh, oh. I that, really that, hope you watched the Lodeen die there. That was so satisfying if you pace that fire. Melee arranged gobble up, scatter blast, shotgun in the face, you know. I saw a quick glimpse of that. It was like there was an inch and then there wasn't an inch. Bambi 760 destroyed. HP. That's really not a lot. A lot indeed. Gambit, 5k lead now, 20 minutes. This Juggernaut has played behind the aggression of this Lycan. And it's why I like. Key thing here is, guys, when you watch the Lycan, he is not the guy who's gonna like. He's not like the win condition, right? He is such an obnoxious early timing that any win condition you you want to put into your draft will find his farm. And that is why like Gambit are enjoying picking it so much because the Void found his farm. The Juggernaut is of course finding farm within power as well. Like a really nice way of uh, enabling enabling the map that is. Well they are uh putting a bit of mid pressure pushed up. They also have the bot lane pushed in by Xani. Emega only has one lane in their control. That's the top lane, but they're gonna have to come and defend this soon. Here, right Dyer's next to their base. There's a rod from Aincrad. A bit of damage onto Excess Vampire. Quick gobble up on the Viper. Look at that damage. Just tick in. They don't even need to do anything. This Viper is already dead. What the hell's going on? The Shapeshift does come out from Lorenov, but he will only use it as a bit of a fright. The wolf will roar, and the sheep instantly back on the high ground. There's some one of his kisses as well. Very, uh... Zone. All right. Zoning. Zoning. Zoning ulti, indeed. I was about to say that. 
That's a kill, a tower. Gambit's still feeling it. They've got blink RP. Guess they can play around it. You have to just look out for the combo that they have on Gambit. It's the slight chain, slight interchange, and then that yep. skewer with the, the... See here? Oh, oh. The chosen one. Nice. Very nice Yules there from Chosen One. Instantly takes out Aina. But that is the play that Gambit are looking for now in their lineup. It's the... Oh, wait, you're a little bit out of position. You're now rooted. Oh, what? You're now skewered. Oh, look, you're now, you know, omni slashed or right click down by a thousand and one different summons that the lightning's created. Fast. That being just two wolves and an echo, but not really that many. Yeah, true. All right, I think the, bi the big question, 5,000 gold ahead. Do we wait for uh, how many Roshans and when do we get 12. to the high ground? 12. 12. <laughs> All right. Uh, I know how Gambit plays now. They like to play for the. Uh, All right, you can just write that down in the ages, trap yeah. book. They like to stack their cheeses up so that they can chain tank, tank big spells. You know. They want to basically get right. the most stacks of fury swipes in a, in a competitive game by eating eighteen cheeses on the line. Yeah, that's that's way too much cheese. I mean, hopefully, hopefully, you're, hopefully they have strong stomachs to handle it. Oh, Lodin, he's just executed, but even looking at mid Yeah, there's, I mean, Lodin's got, all right, 840 HP now. The last time he died, he had like 770 or something. This Snapfire alone with the combo, this is without any right clicks and before magic resistance kicks in, does 980 damage with Scatterblast Cookie and Spit Out. Then you add the right clicks and the shredders and the 25% magic resistance. That's already 750 plus a right click, so Lodin will just die to a snaps full combo. And uh, it's an interesting cookie there from Vampire. Not gonna quite connect though. Bit of a misconnect. Uh, communication there. I mean, it was a good attempt if they got everything out. There's the spit out. Throw that creep onto Petru. Petru burns to death. Vampire will get the kill nevertheless, though. Because that was just a gambit kill here, right? It's like the slight chain skewer kill, the, the gobble up into kisses. Like, they're so, like, they don't have to commit anything really to get a kill or a big pick off. That's when Amiga, they're the lineup that should be the ones looking for these constant fights right now, but his Viper, yeah. he's got ATOS bots. Like I said earlier about that net worth and how it translates to the fight, we're not seeing it from Amiga right now. They just don't have yeah. that well, spread see. of gold to damage. They get to get the tier 3 tower down. Jug quickly spins out back to safety. Spin to win. The case here. Nemiga trying to look for a fight here. Gobble up straight on top of the Ursa. The Taki has already lost 800 HP and he hasn't even got to hit a single time. Chains up. He's in trouble. Chosen one finds the stun on two. Snowball as well to Aina. The Magnus will go down. The Omni slash on Ursa, but Ursa's got his ulti up and running, but he needs to split the damage. Odin comes to the save, but it's not going to be enough. The Ghost Scepter only hits like once or twice. So the jump damage still goes through. Melee's, Mortimer's kisses. Petru burning alive. This Tosk is just trying to run away. Snowball. Only comes out, snap in trouble, but they're gonna get the damage out before the Tusk gets the kill through. Gambit still have four members of their team up. Lodin comes in with a buyback, four versus three scenario. Gobble up, quick creep onto the melee. Rax, it's not really gonna hurt the buildings if you keep throwing those mini, uh, sorry, those creeps onto the buildings. Lodin, gotta be careful he doesn't lose his life again. They get the Necro units out of the way. They keep the melee racks alive. 400 HP. Gambit, we're thinking about. Should we turn around again? It's like, nah. The we're, window we're in which Namiga could utilize the heroes for aggression is somewhat yeah. out of the window right now. Like, they can't cleanly start a fight because where is their stun? Where is their team fight control? They're a skirmish lineup that needed to exit laning phase, looking to chain kill after kill, secure quick Roshans. And that entire game plan now has been deconstructed by Gambit's aggression. Utilization of both Ember and Magnus. Snap I think has played a great part in. You know, the, the Lycan factor does help as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the simplicity the of aggression not. coming out from Gambit. That non-stop desire to go top. They have a DD like you just mentioned. How can the Amiga defend this? They, they don't really have any damage they don't have a blink on task this viper is just dying to a vessel cluster god it's right clicks alone so it's yeah. really difficult to for Amiga. might have to sacrifice one lane of racks just to try and eke out a little bit more farm on the map 
Mimica, they have all teleports available, but how do you fight against this Gambit machine right now? It's the big, big issue here. Okay. Sani so we still have a gets TT to... back on Lauren F. This is the key one, sorry. So if we look away from top and look bottom, Lauren F is now all up by himself. Gets the old time. shift. Gets rotted. Snowball, Laguna Blade. We All go. right, Lycan dead with Shipe Shift on. All right, that's uh, that's one way to work it out. And that's the way to get attack. a grasp on the game. That's the way the cookie crumbles, eh? But they're going to walk straight to Roche. Yep, Roche is up. And already nearly dead. Is this the, the the same kind of bait play from Gambit where they sacrificed the Xani's face's voice somewhere and, and the rest no, of the team would a, be like that was just a bad play. That was just him. All right. I thought I thought that was the good fight. play because that was like they no. go get their get tier 1 and a kill. That was him just being a little bit greedy on the map. All right. To talk a tiny bit late for this one though. Cookie stunning up the Ursa. They have Omni. Got the shards to block him away. Omnis, oh, the RP for Mina. It's going to be the first one of the game, but it's a beautiful one. But the snowball saved just in time. However, Lodin is out. The Mortimer's Kisses will burn out Petru. And Tatake gets chained up. Ursa also out of the way. Xani unstoppable. Three dead members of Nemiga. One second too late for the Roshan pit. Viper's also got 5,000 gold sitting in his uh, bank right now. Chosen one. Webbed up. Oh, they were hoping to get the chains off, but uh, the chains were still in cooldown. However, Gambit, they're already pushing high ground. Yeah, we've got a... Anchor, we're just holding 5.4k gold. Just casually. Will it help? Probably not, but realistically, just to buy something, mate. Not to see. That's kill, just Vampire. All right, that's a that's an angry kill right there. <laughs> Laguna Blade thrown out. Gambit still sitting right next to the base, waiting for uh, their abilities to come back up. Sani can keep on going, spinning and right clicking. Yeah, to watch the Gambit. next melee racks. Radiance middle barracks have fallen. Cheese on the snap still there. Six seconds for gobble up. RP in 50. That's still quite far away. But they have a shape shift on Lorrainoff. Their Omni Slash is also on cooldown. And a casual Paladin Sword picked up by, uh, by Xani. Nobody takes it though. Did he just send it back to base? They're like Paladin Sword. Nah, we got better stuff on us. Yeah, you got the clumsy net on like Or did they... The lockdown. You got the Titan Sliver. Like... Doesn't need it. Did they leave on the ground? And... No, 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 they don't. It's yeah, the, the shop was just bugging there momentarily because it wasn't updating. But yeah, it's it's in right. their uh, it's in their stash right now. Stun on Sani, quick play is gonna be enough. Laguna bleed spin off ages so very close. Oh, the gobble up, the gobble up save, just in time. Nicely played there by Melees. Chuggernaut gets cool the thing there back is actually Lodi stole the wolf from uh, Lycan, killing mm -hmm. off the healing ward from the Juggernaut. Preventing from like the, the play from Melez also having double effect, right? Which was like save the jug and healing ward yeah. gets to regen straight away. Just yeah. has to prolong the read the, the file a bit. He, obviously, his mask madness just farms in junk. It's the small things that this is what Namiga are looking for right now. Just one small yeah. cute play. Will it help them? No, but you know, well, alas. I can try this, uh, the same thing in just a tiny bit. If Laguna Blade is going to be back off cooldown in five seconds. Gobble up on Tatake. Shapeshift coming out. Gambit, they want to end this game here right now. Onto the Ursa they go, but the Lycan is already going to be taken down as the Chosen One also being hit by Xani, but the Disarm finally works out. There's the RP. Beautiful by Aina. And they have everyone off Nemega inside it. They will force the buy back off the Lina. And Gambit, there's the pull up by four. You might have lost your Lycan, but they're making Nemega pay for it. Nexus Vampire on the high ground. Still, still a cheese on the snap. We're jumping back onto the low ground, Melees. Trade off the Hobbs Ward on the high ground. Still, that cheese is there if they need it. Monster Cookie Omni Slash. Oh my god, that Viper is gone. He won't live for long. Tatake, another disarm on the jug. It's the spell, right? Aina will go down. Juggernaut still holding the Aegis. The Chosen One de dealing a decent amount of damage. Excess Vampire, very aggressive play here. God does have the, the slate available, though. And get rid of the Lina. Minecraft desperately just trying to throw hits. There's a face boots down on the ground. Like, all right. <laughs> just casual boots on the ground. 
Radiance, yep, middle nope. Yeah, just and the cheese. He is. Do not the fact that you're even staying here so bold. When you have Tusk alive, like... Oof. Nope. Vampire comes back. Provides mangoes yeah. for all the lads. Yeah, mangoes, healing wards. Very nice. Very nice. Team player. No Lina for 60 seconds, though. Magnus is gonna be up again. Go Scepter. Oh, and she's just dying on the spot. Yeah, that is that a sad, really sad death for Lodin. Got the healing ward, though. Profit. I guess you could call it that, too. Gambit. Keep on going. They just keep on going. Nothing you can do. Another spit, another gobble up. <laughs> like an emit as well. Oh, no. Oh, here comes Lorena. Yeah, Shapeshift is on. Just wrecking his way through. Exus Vampire, double chains. The last Ranger Axe falling. It's gonna be Mega Creeps. 32 minutes in. Gambit definitely stepped up their uh, their pace here compared to game number one. Really not giving much of a breather for Nemega here to recover. I mean, Nemega's just been ro running around this, 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 yeah, this, tur this turtle line basically here. They haven't been able to cross it. Yeah, that's never really good for a Dota game. I hope Kasani can, can be the throw. He gets to rapier, he dies. Ursa suddenly gets that injection of gold. He also wants to rapier himself. Okay, he's, he's eyeing it up. Yeah. Cobble up, Exus Vampire. Dodges the rod with the blink dagger. Gambit just went from being really aggressive to like, mm, should we maybe go for it? Yeah. Eight seconds for Omni Slash. Kasani. Yeah, that Omni Slash is gonna hurt. That is really gonna hurt. How did that stun not connect? That spin definitely came right after the stun connected, but uh, it didn't. Lodin, instant heal from the Chosen One. Really doesn't want to stay in those chains, but that's Guardian Greaves of cooldown. He can't purge it for a second time. Gambit, they're so close to each other. They're just toying with Nemega here. Chosen One gets the stun out. The Laguna Blade, there's a shapeshift coming out as well. Aina gets, the, gets back to safety. But it's just getting right clicked away. Lodin is down. Lorenov is down as well. Melee's looking for Petru. Chosen one right next to him, though. Gobble up. Doesn't quite connect with the spit, but Petru's dead. Lina also dying slowly, slowly, and finally taken down. Aina, 45 HP. Well, he's also dead. That infantry spear will connect. Three versus three Omni Slash. Ursa is out, but Ursa coming in with a buyback. Sani. Wants to take Lodin. Right clicks coming through. A lot of creeps in the way. A lot of slows as well on this Juggernaut. And now Ursa finally gets to hit the Juggernaut. Melee goes in with the stun. They are trading a lot. Ultra kill for Xani. Can he get the rampage with that? Yes, he will. He takes down the Ursa. It's a rampage. And GG. That pretty much seals the deal here for Nemega. They've only got one series after this one. But if they... I mean, they really needed to get some points from this one. It will not happen for them today and they just might end up being at the bottom of division two however for gambit